Hello and welcome to the fifth and final unit of week two. Now that you've been, been acquainted with the conceptual and the perceptual steps of our success formula, I would like to come back to the semantic notation we've been talking about in the week before. This semantic notation forms the unify part of our success formula. Now I would like to come back and show you that the single rules of this unify part of the success formula support other rules in other steps. I want to do that by going through single rules as you see those single rules on our poster. This poster has the seven steps of the success formula in the columns and the second column is the unify column. So we have a small picture for every rule of this semantic design part of our success formula in the second column. And I want to show you some of those pictures and explain how they support other rules in other steps. Let's start with this first one, which is about the terms and abbreviations. You probably remember that we have been talking uh, in the semantic notation um, uh, part of, of this course that we suggest um, a, a unified usage of terms and abbreviations. And this is not only a semantic rule, but it helps to understand the reports and the presentations. So it supports the conveyance of messages, it supports the say step of our success formula. Same is with numbers, units and dates. If you use the same notation for numbers, units and dates, you will better understand a report this supports say. The same is if you put the message in the same way on every report, at the same position, in the same font, the overall layout is the same, you immediately see, well, this is obviously the message. And this helps understanding this supports say. Or if we look at titles, you remember titles are really important to identify the content of a chart or a table. If we have a um, unified usage of titles, this supports the conveyance of messages. Or if we look at tables, if we unify the visualization of tables by using the same, let's say, um, design style guide for tables, then it would help to understand the structure of a table. You see on the left hand side a bad design of, of a table, on the right hand side a good structured design. If that is our standard, it would help to understand the structure of the table. It supports structure. Same is, same is if we have a, a certain visualization for the chapters of a, a 10 or 15 page report, then we would understand the structure of that report. Let's come to the next one. If we really have a consistent use of this vertical and horizontal charts, you remember that we suggested to only use horizontal charts for time series and vertical charts, typical bar charts, for the um, comparison of structures. If we do that, this is of course a semantic rule, but it supports the choice of the right visualization, so it supports express. The same is if we have a, a unification of the way we visualize variances, red and green and, and so on, this will help to, 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 to find the right way uh, for a proper visualization. Let's come to simplify. If we have a, a concept for the usage of colors, so if in our notation manual, you remember we've been talking about notation manual, if in that notation manual we have a consistent defined usage of colors, then you won't have any colored charts anymore. Unless 
the color supports meaning. If always my company is colored in blue and the others are colored in, 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 in gray, that might be perfect, but it should have a meaning. Color should convey meaning and this has to be defined in the notation manual. Or if you look at indicators, if you have a plethora of indicators and all the designers of reports use their own indicators to highlight whatever is uh, for highlighting, then you won't understand it. Define it in the notation manual and it will be much simpler. simpler. The layout is simplified. The other thing is, if in our notation manual we decide to have integrated labels, we, to have integrated legends, so not separated as in the chart on the left-hand side, then it's much easier to read. And if we do that, it supports the simplification of our chart. A much bigger thing is the support of condense. Actually, it's um, the situation that condensing is not possible without semantic design. Look at this um, electric chart, map, whatever, circuits. If it, it's really high condensed information and you would not understand that if you would not have a kind of pattern recognition for what is going on and you immediately know, okay, this is a, this is a capacitor. It's the same with sheet music. Uh, a conductor would not be able to understand the score with thousands of black dots if there would not be <coughs> a pattern recognition and pattern recognition is only possible with semantic notation. So condense and unify are really close together. Well, and unification in general supports condense as well in the usage of multiple charts. If we have decided uh, that we have specific chart types, we can add them together on one page, would understand it, and um, by this can condense information. Another aspect is the support of check. We've been talking about uh, correct scaling. And, well, sometimes it's it's probably not possible to use the same scale, but if it's not possible, then we should show that it is a different scale. And for this, we use scaling indicators. And if they are standardized, so we have a semantic design for scaling indicators, you will understand the different scales. So it supports check. Same is with outlier unifier. Uh, with, with outlier uh, indicators, so the unification of those out outlier indicators supports the check issue. Well, now that we've been through all those single rules of the unify step of our success formula, you've seen that those single rules the semantic design supports all the other steps of our success formula. And that's the reason why we think that this semantic design, what we've been talking about the last week, is the missing link to an international business communication standard, a visual language that helps us to convey our messages like the, the standards in other disciplines help to communicate in other disciplines. This is actually the main idea of Hichet and Feist and the main aspect of the international business communication standards, adding semantic design to the other steps. As I've already mentioned in the beginning, those international business communication standards are not defined and not um, further developed by Hichet and Feist, but it's an open source project. So again, I would like to invite you to work with us on that open source project. Read it for free on ibcs-a.org. And do not only read it, please comment on it. We have a version one of those international business communication standards and the community will develop this further. So we will probably have a version two next year and probably your comments will be respected. All comments will be shown on the website 
and they are listed on the first page so you see the latest comments on our project website. If you need additional material, you find some PDFs that might be helpful uh, on our website. You find the notation manuals or templates for those notation manuals that we've been talking about. By the way, you will find the templates as well um, in, in PDF format, in Excel format, uh, sometimes even in Excel format. And you will find the poster we've been talking about um, a second ago. So if you need additional material, just look at the websites. Well, we have come to the end of our course on semantic notation. Don't forget to take your weekly assignments. On behalf of Hichert and Feist, um, I wish you a lot of success when implementing the success formula of the International Business Communication Standards. Thank you and goodbye.